Hi, my name is Lisa. I've been uh, making water kefir for several years and I decided to make a video to show you how easy it is. Many of you have heard of kombucha or dairy kefir, um, and those are all great things that you can make at home, but I find water kefir is very simple, very easy to store, very easy to, and uh, very inexpensive to maintain. So you start with, you hear that, that seal break? This is uh, live kefir greens that I've been using for years. I started off with two tablespoons of dry kefir grains that I got online. Um, and I have filled and refilled this jar several times, giving cups and cups of it away to um, friends who want to start their own batches. All you do is uh, take some of the kefir grains, and I'm just doing estimated. I don't have a recipe per se, um, just because I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not an exacting person. Um, so uh, one of the things about kefir grains is you don't want to use metal. So I'm using a plastic slotted spoon and I just take a bunch, like a spoonful like this. I don't know, maybe that's half a cup. So maybe I'll, I'll do, I don't know, a cup, about a cup of kefir grains. And I do about an equal part of uh, sugar. So you wanna use natural sugar, not refined sugar. Um, I don't like the taste of coconut sugar, so I don't use that. Pour about a cup <laughs> in here. About an equal amount. I, I actually think it's more than a cup, but I try to make it equal. Sometimes I put a little bit of baking soda in it just to kind of stabilize it a little bit. That looks good. <laughs> Why my uh, grains are a little brown is because I use organic molasses in it. It's just another element that um, the kefir grains seem to like. They do really well with it. So I'm just gonna pour a, a glob in. <laughs> you like my measurements? There, that's a good glob. Um, and that's basically it for, for day one. But, um, oh, that's all the ingredients except for the water. So I'm gonna put some water in it. Filtered spring water is really good. Um, don't use tap water. And I put oh, probably about eight cups. Stir to dissolve the sugars. And that's it for day one. I mean, how long did that take? Close it up. And I'm gonna leave it on the counter here for about a week. D depending on the weather, if, um, if it's warm, if it's summertime, it could take four days. Um, but you just want it to um, kind of eat all the sugar and start to smell a little tart, smell a little fermented, and then you know it's done. Um, but mine, it's um, April right now. It's not hot, but I'll probably leave it for about a week and then I'll show you what I do for the second fermentation. This is the kefir water that we started with. It's been a week. And notice all the bubbles in it. And you can see, let me, get, let me turn it around. You can see some of the kefir grains floating. That means they've eaten all the sugar and they're happy. And if you look at the bottom, there's no residual sugar on the bottom. So that's what I look for. Then I open it and take a smell. Ooh, and it smells really fermented, a yeasty kind of smell. I take my eight eight cup, two quart container. And then I take my nylon strainer. So I'm gonna just pour that out. Carefully pour it out. Okay. 
and a little shake, try to get all of the water out. This is my leftover kefir. Remember I did like a scoop? So here's the scoop that I took from before and look at how much it's multiplied. It just about doubled. So that's great, right? That's awesome. You'll get twice as many grains every time you do this. And I mentioned that I, um, that I just estimate, you really can't harm your heifer grains. Um, you just feed it sugar and it's fine. So if you have too much sugar, then you just let it go for a little longer. If you have uh, too many grains, it'll ferment it quicker. So just finding your right balance is something that you just have to experiment with. All right, so now I have this beautiful kefir water and I'm gonna pour it back into the jar. I could have rinsed it out, it's fine. So you, wanna, you don't wanna really uh, leave soap, that would not be good for it, not be too healthy. So this is fine as it is right now. You could actually just go to a second fermentation. Actually, I can do that right now. You just take a jar with a flip top um, and you can add any or none or no fruit um, to it at all. Um, and then just pour this into that and let it sit for a day. But what I usually like to do just, um, I don't know why, I just have ever since I've done this, is just taking a couple of um, slices of fresh ginger. And because I'm lazy, I don't even peel it. I just take a couple of these and I throw them in there because I'm gonna strain them out. Dried apricots, you notice they're dark because they don't have any um, sulfur dioxide. So you don't want any chemicals on your, on your fruit. Um, but dried fruit's great because they're concentrated sugars. So I just throw a couple of those in there. And then I like to put fresh lemon. I get my lemon down to this where I get some juice. And then I just give that a squeeze. And that is my second fermentation. It's, I can strain it tomorrow, like I said, or if you wanna do different things. Um, like for instance, last time, I just cut up a plum and I stuck it in the jar and then I poured, poured some of the kefir water in there. I leave a little bit of space. Be sure to do that because, let me see if it'll, yeah, it starts to, it, it has a lot of fizz. <laughs> I don't want, I want to keep it there. So it gets really carbonated. Again, that means you've got live kefir water and it's eating all of the sugar in the fruit or whatever you put in it. Don't eat this, the fruit. I'll strain that out and just have the kefir water to drink, but the fruit is kind of spent. Um, the kefir has eaten all the sugar and it's kind of, it gets a little nasty. So I just toss that or you can put that in your compost pile or feed it to your compost worms. All right, I decided we should do one more just to show you how I get it from the second fermentation to the bottles. And you can see from just a day or two, um, the kefir, even though it doesn't have any grains, it is a living, the water is fermented and it's living and it's eating all of the sugars that are in the, um, what we, the apricots and the lemon that we put in it. So I'm just gonna strain it off in the sink and then I'll pour it into the bottles. Um, and I think I'll just use, do one, with them, one of them with blueberries. Okay, strainer, don't use metal. Oh, see, it's a good thing I did that. Can you hear the fizziness? 
That's some really happy kefir water right there. Let's put some blueberries in it. And I think I'll just do this one. Blueberries don't ha actually have a lot of sugar, but it'll be enough to color it and flavor it. And remember, I already flavored it with the apricots and the lemon and the um, ginger. So notice I, I leave a good amount of room at the top because I can tell it's really fizzy. It's really active. So just seal it up. Me, I just put these in the refrigerator like that. But like tomorrow it'll be cold, but it won't be as fizzy as it can get. Um, when you open them, really, really careful. I've I've looked at it and go, oh, there's there's sediment on the bottom. Let me turn it upside down and get that stirred in. And then when I opened it, I lost literally the entire thing. The whole thing just exploded all over the the kitchen, and I had no kefir left. So be very careful. They do. They're really active. So when you know that you have active kefir, you can just pop it, let it release every, I don't know, six, eight hours, and then it won't be as explosive when you're ready to drink it. But yeah, these are ready to go. They're great. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.